Welcome to Canadian Updates Subscribe the channel Canada stands at a crossroads, facing a decision that will shape its air force for decades. The aging CF-18 Hornets need replacing, and for years, the debate was locked between the F-35 and the F-A-18 Super Hornet. But now, the Swedish Saab Gripen E is a serious contender. This isn't just about picking a jet, it's about redefining Canada's defense strategy. The Gripen E is built for harsh conditions, able to operate from short runways and even highways. It can be refueled and rearmed quickly by a small crew, making it ideal for Canada's vast, rugged terrain. Unlike the F-35, which needs pristine bases and heavy support, the Gripen E thrives in remote, austere environments. For a country defending the world's second-largest landmass, flexibility is essential. The conversation is shifting from high-tech specs to real-world survivability and adaptability. The Gripen E is a workhorse, resilient, reliable, and ready for Canada's unique challenges. This move signals Canada's willingness to chart its own course, prioritizing national needs over alliance conformity. Considering a non-American fighter is a bold statement of strategic independence. It shows Ottawa is thinking critically about its future role in global security. The Gripen E isn't just an aircraft, it's a declaration that Canada is ready to lead, not just follow. This decision could redefine Canada's place in the defense world. It's about choosing a jet that can actually operate where Canada needs it most. The Gripen E's philosophy of distributed, adaptable strength fits Canada's pragmatic approach. It's a shift from centralized power to flexible, resilient defense. The world is watching as Canada considers a new path. This isn't just a procurement, it's a statement of intent. The Gripen E represents a new era for Canadian air power. Canada is ready to play a new game. The question is, will it take the leap? The answer will echo for generations. What sets the Gripen E apart? At its core, it's a single-engine, multi-role fighter built for agility and efficiency. Designed by Saab, the Gripen E is light, fast and highly maneuverable, a welterweight in a world of heavyweights. Its advanced electronic warfare suite is a game-changer, making the jet a master of the digital battlefield. The Gripen E can jam enemy radars, disrupt communications, and create false targets, making itself a ghost in the sky. Instead of relying solely on physical stealth, it uses electronic dominance to stay one step ahead. This approach is often just as effective as traditional stealth, and sometimes even more adaptable. Cost is another major advantage. The Gripen E is the most affordable Western fighter to operate and maintain. Lower costs mean more jets, more flight hours, and better pilot training for Canada. Its open architecture allows for rapid upgrades, New software, sensors and weapons can be integrated quickly and affordably. This future-proof design ensures the Gripen E stays at the cutting edge throughout its service life. For Canada this means avoiding technological lock-in and staying ahead of evolving threats. The Gripen E is not just a fighter, it's a smart, adaptable platform built for the realities of modern warfare. It's a jet that evolves as fast as the threats it faces. For a country with a limited defense budget, this efficiency is a massive advantage. The Gripen E's design philosophy is all about flexibility, affordability, and staying ahead of the curve. That's why it's causing such a stir in Canada's fighter jet competition. It's a future-ready investment. The Arctic is Canada's strategic frontier, now more contested than ever. Melting ice is opening new shipping lanes and resources, drawing global attention and competition. Russia is building up its Arctic military, and China is eyeing the region. Canada needs credible air power to assert sovereignty over its vast north. The Gripen E's ability to operate from short, icy runways and remote bases makes it perfect for Arctic defense. It doesn't need massive airfields, just a stretch of highway or a small airstrip. This means Canada could maintain a persistent, flexible presence across the north, responding rapidly to any incursion. The Gripen's low maintenance needs and small support footprint are ideal for harsh remote environments. Choosing the Gripen E would also boost Canada's military independence. Unlike US-made jets, the Gripen comes with full technology transfer, giving Canada control over maintenance and upgrades. This autonomy strengthens Canada's position within NORAD and NATO, making it a more capable, self-reliant partner. It's not about distancing from allies, it's about being a stronger, more independent one. The Gripen E is a tool for sovereignty, resilience and true partnership. It's a mature step for a confident nation. Buying a fighter jet is about more than hardware, it's about economic impact. 
Saab's Gripen E proposal promises 100% industrial and technological benefits for Canada. Every dollar spent would generate a dollar's worth of economic activity at home. This means new jobs, technology transfer, and a stronger Canadian aerospace sector. Saab would set up production and support facilities in Canada, creating high-tech jobs and fostering innovation. Canadian firms would join the global grip and supply chain, exporting components worldwide. Unlike restrictive U.S. deals, Saab's model empowers Canada to innovate and maintain its own fleet. This isn't just a purchase, it's an investment in Canada's technological future and economic security. The Gripenese economic benefits are central to its strategic value. The choice of a fighter jet is a defining moment for any nation. Sweden built the Gripen for self-reliance and total defense, reflecting its unique strategy. Brazil's decision to buy and co-produce the Gripen E transformed its aerospace industry and military capabilities. In contrast, many NATO allies chose the F-35, gaining interoperability but sacrificing some autonomy and industrial growth. Canada now faces a similar crossroads. Will it opt for deep integration with the F-35, or choose the strategic independence and industrial partnership of the Gripen E? The Gripen is more than an aircraft, it's a catalyst for growth and self-determination. It allows a nation to tailor its defense to its own needs, not just follow a one-size-fits-all model. This decision will reveal Canada's priorities for the 21st century. Is it about following or leading? The Gripen E offers a path to national flexibility and technological leadership. The choice will echo far beyond the runway. It's about what kind of nation Canada wants to be. Choosing the Gripen E wouldn't isolate Canada, it would open new doors. The Gripen family includes Sweden, Brazil, the Czech Republic, Hungary, South Africa, and Thailand, nations that value independence and collaboration. Canada would join a network of partners sharing training, tactics, and technology. Full technology transfer means Canada could help shape future Gripen upgrades, not just buy off the shelf. The Gripen is fully NATO compatible, integrating seamlessly with allied forces. Interoperability is about systems and doctrine, not just matching airframes. Canadian Gripens could bring unique capabilities, like electronic warfare and austere operations, to coalition missions. This would make Canada a more valuable, flexible ally. Diversifying capabilities strengthens alliances and resilience. The Gripen E is a smart way to build modern partnerships. Canada's next fighter jet will shape its security, economy, and global role for decades. The Gripen E is rugged, flexible, and almost tailor-made for Canada's vast, challenging landscape. Its economic benefits, jobs, innovation, and technology transfer are unmatched. Strategically it offers independence and new partnerships, while strengthening traditional alliances. The Gripen E is more than a jet. It's a smart, forward-looking investment in Canada's future. Considering the Gripen E shows Canada's thinking differently, thinking smarter. The final decision will define the nation's path for a generation. Will Canada seize the opportunity to lead?